Hello, I'm Akin Ari Hosoyamada from NTT Social Informatics Laboratories. This is a token provably quantum secure tweakable block ciphers. This is a joint work with Tetsu Iwata from Nagoya University. Uh, so, this is the summary of our results. First, Kaplan et al. showed that some TBC modes of BCs, such as LRW constructions, are completely broken by polynomial time quantum query attacks. And there has been no TBC modes proven to be secure against quantum query attacks. And in our paper, we showed a new scheme, LRWQ, which is a TBC mode of block ciphers. And we prove that LRWQ is secure against quantum query attacks. This is the summary of our results. Next, I would like to explain about the background of our research. First, I would like to recall uh, the classical attack model of chosen plain text attacks. Uh, in the classical attack model, we usually assume there is an adversary who has a classical computer and there is an encryption oracle. And the adversary is allowed to make many queries to the encryption oracle. And if a message M is queried to the encryption oracle, then the oracle returns the corresponding cipher text to the adversary. Uh, so this is the classical mo attack model of chosen plain text attacks. Next, I'd like to explain about two attack models in the quantum setting. The first model is called the Q1 model. In this model, the computer of the adversary is replaced with a quantum one. Uh, so the adversary can uh, use quantum computers for offline computations. Uh, but the encryption oracle uh, is unchanged from the classical setting. Uh, and again, adversary can make uh, many classical queries to the oracle. This is the Q1 model. And the other model in the quantum setting is this one, which is called the Q2 model. In this model, the oracle is also replaced with a quantum one, quantum encryption oracle. And now, all of computations and communications between the oracle and adversary are done in quantum superposition. So, the adversary can make queries in quantum superposition, and the response from oracle is also in quantum superposition. Uh, so, this is the Q2 model. And apparently, uh, the ability of the adversary in this model, Q2 model, is much stronger than uh, the ability of adversary in this model. Because in the Q2 model, uh, both of computations and communications are done in quantum superposition. Uh, so these are uh, the two main attack models in the quantum setting. Next, I'd like to explain about uh, quantum security notions. Uh, so, there are two security notions in the quantum setting, standard security and quantum security. The first one is security against Q1 attacks, or classical query attacks. And the second one is security against Q2 attacks, or quantum query attacks. And apparently, the first one, standard security, is important. Because uh, in the Q1 model, uh, the oracle is the same as the classical one, and so, uh, the Q1 model uh, will be realistic, as soon as uh, large-scale fault-tolerant quantum computers are available. And sometimes, uh, the word post-quantum security just means only uh, standard security. But here, I would like to emphasize that studying quantum security is also important. And here, uh, I would like to explain three reasons. The first reason is that uh, studying quantum security is theoretically interesting, because uh, many things uh, do not, that do not happen in the classical setting happen in the Q2 model. Uh, for instance, uh, some symmetric schemes that are proven to be secure in the classical setting are completely broken in polynomial time in the Q2 model. And so, studying quantum security is theoretically interesting. And second, Considering Q2 model will be plausible in the far future when lots of computations and communications are done in quantum superposition. And finally, if a scheme is proven to be secure against Q2 attacks, then the scheme is secure against all attacks in arbitrary intermediate models between Q1 and Q2. And we can uh, claim that the scheme is secure against all possible black box query attacks.
Uh, so these are uh, the three reasons that I, I think studying quantum sensitivity is also important. Next, I'd like to explain about the motivation behind our research. Uh, first, I'd like to recall a very basic uh, about tweakable block ciphers. Uh, so, a tweakable block cipher, or TBC, is a block cipher that takes an additional input called a tweak. And the tweaks are supposed to be completely public. And if a different tweak value is used uh, to uh, such a tweakable block cipher, then a completely different and independent block cipher is instantiated. And the tweakable block ciphers are used in many efficient and highly secure AEs, MACs, and so on. And there are two approaches to build tweakable block ciphers. The first approach is uh, to build a TBC as a dedicated primitive, like Stingy. And another approach is to build a tweakable block cipher as a mode of block ciphers, like the LRW construction. And our focus is the second approach. And next, I'd like to recall uh, basics about uh, LRW constructions. Uh, so the LRW constructions are uh, the most basic uh, model of block ciphers to, for uh, tweakable block ciphers introduced by Riskov, Rivest, and Wagner. And there are two variants, LRW1 and LRW2. Uh, so these constructions are proven to be uh, secure in the classical setting. But uh, in Crypto 2016, Kaplan et al. showed uh, this construction, LRW2, uh, is completely broken uh, by uh, polynomial time Q2 attack. And actually, a similar attack works on LRW1. Uh, so, uh, eventually, uh, these both of uh, two constructions are completely broken in polynomial time by Q2 attacks. And next, I'd like to explain how uh, the Q2 attacks work. Uh, so here, uh, I'd like to explain both of uh, the attacks on LRW1 and LRW2, uh, but uh, I do not have enough time to explain both attacks. Uh, so here, I'd like to focus on the attack on LRW1. First, uh, define a function f like this. f of t is equal to LRW1 over m0 and t plus LRW1 over m1 and t. Here, uh, m0 and m1 are some fixed constants. And then define a value s like this. EK of M0 plus EK of M1. This is a secret value depending on the secret key K. Then, uh, with some straightforward calculation, uh, we can confirm that this function F is periodic and S is the period. That is, F of T plus S is equal to F of T. This equation holds for all T. And this means that the period S can be recovered by applying Simon's quantum period finding algorithm on this function f. Uh, here, please note that uh, this algorithm, Simon's quantum algorithm, is a polynomial time uh, algorithm that finds a period of periodic function. And please note that uh, now we are assuming the adversary can make quantum superposition queries to LRW1. So the adversary can uh, evaluate this function f in quantum superposition, and thus the adversary. Uh, can apply Simon's quantum algorithm on this function f. And next, suppose that uh, this LRW1 uh, is replaced with a tweakable random permutation, or ideally random tweakable uh, block cipher. Then, uh, even if the adversary applies Simon's algorithm on this function f, the Simon's algorithm will not uh, return any period. And so, the adversary can distinguish LRW1 from uh, tweakable random permutation, or ideally uh, random tweakable block cipher, by checking if Simon's algorithm will return a period or not in polynomial time. Uh, so this is a very rough overview about uh, how the attack on LRW1 works. And then, uh, now the important point is, so far, uh, there does not exist any TBC mode with provable security against Q2 attacks or quantum query attacks. And this is uh, the starting point or uh, the motivation of our research. Uh, and our goal uh, in our paper is to build a TBC mode with provable security against Q2 attacks or quantum query attacks. 
Next, I would like to introduce our new constru construction, uh, LRWQ. Uh, so recall that LRW1 construction looks like this. This is secure in the classical setting, but broken in Q2 model. And very roughly speaking, the reason that uh, this structure uh, is completely broken in the Q2 model is that a key dependent value, e of m, this value, is added or XOR with a variable t and a full control of adversaries. Uh, so this is a very rough reason that uh, LRW1 is completely broken in uh, Q2 model. I mean, uh, if such a property holds, uh, we can make a periodic function from this structure and we can apply Simon's algorithm to break this scheme. And so, to prevent uh, or uh, to uh, break uh, such property, we introduce additional block cipher call here. And this is our new construction, LRWQ. And we use uh, three different keys, K1 and K2 and K3, for uh, different block cipher calls. And so, uh, by introducing additional block cipher calls here, we can prevent attacks uh, using Simon's quantum algorithm. And next, I would like to uh, explain about how we proved the security of LRWQ construction against quantum query attacks. Uh, so this is our main result. LRWQ, this one, is indistinguishable from tweakable random permutation by Q2 attacks up to order 2 to the power n over 6 quantum encryption queries. That is, LRWQ is secure against quantum chosen plain text attacks. Uh, and here, please note that we do not claim any security against quantum chosen cipher text attacks. And we assume adversaries can query both of M and T in quantum superposition. Uh, I will uh, explain details about uh, security against uh, quantum chosen ciphertext attacks later. And to prove uh, this theorem, we used uh, the compressed oracle technique. And next, I'd like to explain a brief overview about this technique. Uh, so, in the quantum setting, one of the most significant difficulties in proving the quantum security is that it is non trivial how to record queries to oracles. Uh, so in the classical setting, it is very trivial that uh, we can record queries to oracles or response from oracles. But in the quantum setting, if we uh, record queries to the oracles in a naive way, then uh, it completely, sometimes it completely breaks uh, the quantum state of the adversary and the proof does not work. And so in the quantum setting, it is non-trivial how to record queries to oracles. But in 2019, Chandri uh, introduced a very useful technique, which is named the compressed oracle technique. This technique enables us to record queries uh, and responses of random functions to some extent. And actually, uh, this technique is somewhat uh, close to or uh, similar to the classical lazy sampling. And the behavior of the compressed oracle for a random function f looks like this. Uh, first, if a fresh value x is queried to uh, the compressed oracle, uh, then the oracle lazily samples the value y is equal to f of x, and then record the pair x and f of x in the database. And so, uh, this oracle, compressed oracle, keeps a database which stores history of queries and responses, like the classical lazy sampling. And next, if a non-fresh value x is queried to the oracle, then uh, the compressed oracle returns the recorded value. Uh, this part is the same as the classical lazy sampling. But unlike the classical lazy sampling, the compressed oracle sometimes removes or rewrites the record if necessary. Uh, so this is uh, somewhat different from the classical lazy sampling. And this may seem uh, somewhat weird, but uh, this part is essential to record queries in the quantum setting. And so, uh, this part is somewhat uh, different from the classical lazy sampling, but still, uh, this technique enables us to use the intuition on classical lazy sampling to some extent. Uh, so, this is a rough overview of compressed oracle technique. And next, uh, I would like to explain uh, how to prove 
the indistinguishability of this construction, LRWQ, and uh, tweakable random permutation, or ideally random uh, tweakable block cipher. And to prove indistinguishability, I would like to use uh, the compressed oracle technique. Uh, and uh, please note that the compressed oracle technique is applicable only to random functions. And it is not applicable for uh, other, uh, other uh, primitives, such as random permutations. And so, uh, next, uh, well, first, uh, I would like to change these schemes so that uh, they will be composed of only random functions. And first, by assuming uh, the underlying block ciphers are secure, we can replace uh, the block, block ciphers uh, to random permutations, RP0, RP1, RP2, like this. And the security loss will be uh, very small if the underlying uh, block cipher is secure. And next, I would like to also replace random permutations into random functions, RF0, RF1, and RF2. And the security loss due to uh, changing random permutations to random functions uh, is like this. And this security loss is still small, uh, sufficiently small, if the number of quantum queries Q is not so large. And next, I would like to also replace this uh, tweakable random permutation into a random function. Like this. And now the security loss of changing tweakable random permutation into a single random function of two inputs uh, is uh, like this. Uh, so again, this security loss is not so uh, large or uh, sufficiently small if uh, the number of quantum queries Q is not large. And next, I'd like to uh, change uh, this random function further so that uh, the structures of this function and this function uh, will be close to each other as much as possible. And I'd like to change uh, this random function like this. Uh, so again, uh, this RF0, RF1 are random functions. And this RF big is also uh, another independent random function. And this random function takes three inputs, M and this sum and this T. And this structure uh, seems a little bit more complicated than uh, just a single random function. But still, uh, the distribution, output distribution of this structure is completely the same as uh, the output distribution of random function. Because this RF big takes M and T themselves as inputs. And so, uh, there is no security loss uh, for changing uh, random function to this complex structure. And I would like to call this structure as FSF small, and I would like to call this structure as FSF big. And please note that uh, these functions, RF0, RF1, and RF2, and RF big, these are random functions, and we can use the compressed oracle technique to these functions. And next, uh, please recall that uh, the compressed oracle keeps a database. Uh, that uh, to store history of queries and responses. And so the oracle of this structure, FSF small, keeps three databases. Database D0 for RF0, and database D1 for RF1, and database D2 for RF2. And similarly, the oracle uh, of this structure keeps three databases, D0 and D1 and D big. And next, Suppose that uh, the tuple of database D0 and D1 and D2 for this structure does not contain any collision here at input to the RF2. And we say that such uh, database is good, or uh, such a good database is a good database. And similarly, uh, we say that if a tuple of database D0 and D1 and D big does not contain any collision here, then we say that this is a good database. And now the important thing is there is a natural one-to-one -one correspondence between the set of good databases for this construction and the, good, uh, the set of good databases for this construction. And roughly speaking, this means that 
the component of quantum state of the adversary interacting with FSF small containing good databases is almost equal to the component of quantum state of the adversary interacting with FSF weak containing good databases. And intuitively, this further means that the two functions, FSF small and FSF big, these are indistinguishable as long as databases are good. And so what is remained to be shown is producing bad databases or no good databases is hard. And next, I'd like to explain why we can show uh, producing uh, no good databases or bad databases is hard. And please note that a tuple of database D0 and D1 and D2 for FSF small is bad or non good if and only if it contains a certain kind of collision like this. In the classical setting, showing the hardness of producing such bad databases or showing the hardness of uh, producing uh, such collision is very easy by using the lazy sampling. And even in the, class uh, even in the quantum setting, uh, Thanks to the compressed oracle technique, we can use uh, the intuition of lazy sampling, classical lazy sampling, to some extent. Uh, because uh, the compressed oracle, uh, very roughly speaking, the compressed oracle enables us to uh, use the classical intuition of lazy sampling to some extent. And so, uh, this is a very rough overview about how we showed uh, the quantum security of LRWQ. And here, I would like to uh, provide some remarks. Uh, first, LRWQ, our construction, is not secure against chosen ciphertext attacks, even in the classical setting, because a chosen ciphertext attack making order one classical queries uh, distinguishes LRWQ. And second, very recently, we found some errors in the details of the proof. Actually, we observed that uh, such errors, uh, these errors can be fixed by modifying the definition of good databases slightly. And by modifying uh, this definition, uh, the bound of prop proposition 8 in our paper, an intermediate proposition, will be changed from this one to this one. Uh, but uh, fortunately, the final bound, uh, this one, will not be changed. And we are preparing an errata, and we are going to uh, make this errata uh, public soon. Uh, so finally, I'd like to summarize today's my talk. Uh, so first, there has been no TBC mode of BCs proven to be secure against quantum query attacks or Q2 attacks. And in our paper, we introduced a new construction, which we name LRWQ. This is a modified version of LRW1. And LRWQ, uh, and we proved that this construction is secure against quantum query chosen plain text attacks. And we used the compressed oracle technique to prove uh, the security. Uh, and actually, uh, recently we found uh, there is some errors. There are some errors uh, in our proof, but uh, we observed that we observed that uh, they can be fixed by slightly modifying the definition of good databases. And we are uh, preparing an errata, and we will uh, make it public soon. And finally, I would like to explain uh, possible future work. Uh, apparently, uh, the important future work is uh, to come up with uh, new construction with security against quantum chosen ciphertext attacks, because our construction is not secure against uh, chosen ciphertext attacks. Uh, but to prove security against uh, quantum chosen ciphertext attacks, a permutation version of the compressed oracle is necessary, because uh, the compressed oracle technique is applicable only to random functions. But uh, to prove security against chosen ciphertext attacks, we have to record uh, queries to decryption oracles. And uh, to uh, record queries to decryption oracles, a permutation version of the compressed oracle uh, will be necessary. And recently, some researchers uh, have been uh, working on uh, developing a permutation version of the compressed oracle, but uh, as far as I know, no one has succeeded yet. Uh, so, uh, this, task, this task is uh, somewhat uh, difficult, but still, I think uh, these topics uh, will be uh, very interesting future works. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention.